And if you take a look at its last six months performance, what you will see is that it was trading at 13 rupees. It went all the way to 32 rupees. So there was almost a 150% growth in this stock in the last six months itself. So you can see that this is the mid cap index in India and from its top, it is trading at roughly. Now let's do the same exercise for small cap index. Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So on today's video, I'm going to make nine forecast about the stock market in the year 2023. I will also talk about what is it that I'm doing in the market in the year 2023. What do I see as the outlook as whatever I say, I will back it up with the numbers and data. Now, whether you agree with me, whether you disagree with me, either way, it will help you understand what type of stocks to buy, what type of stocks to avoid. What is it that you should be doing in the Indian market? What is it that you should be doing in the US market? So let us kickstart our video. And just a very quick note, many of you are asking me in the comment box that, hey, Akshat, are you investing in the US market? So the answer is yes. Yes, I'm building bulk positions in the US market right now. And for that, you can follow my West or my portfolio in the US stocks on Vested. So the link is given in the description box. You can go and check it out. And the first key prediction that I will make about the stock market in 2023 is that the stock market is going to be volatile. Can I show you some data? Why am I saying it? Yes, 100%. So take a look at this graphic. And what you would notice is that almost every single year, starting from the year 2012-2013, the stock market corrects by more than 10% on an average two times per year. And you can see this right from the time 2010. So that was three times that the stock market corrected more than 10%, then four times in 2011, then one time, then two times, then zero times. So if you take the average, it will come out to be roughly two times. So let's pick the data for the year 2020, 2021 and 2022, and then try to do a prognosis for the year 2023. So here you can clearly see that in the year 2020, the stock market corrected quite aggressively due to COVID fall. So this is fall number one that happened in the stock market. This can be termed as the first fall. This can somewhat be termed as the second fall because this was almost a 9% correction. So we will plug it there. This has been the third correction, which has happened for almost 17%. So in the last two years, three major corrections have happened and our average is what? Two. So going by that logic, it is very given that in the year 2023, stock markets won't go like this in a straight line fashion upwards, or they will go like this. It will be a highly volatile market. And there is a very, very good chance that we will see a 10% correction in the year 2023. Now, before you start panicking, please hear the other points. And this brings us to forecast number two, that 2023 is going to be a good year for the stock market. And I am also investing a lot of money in the stock market. Now, why am I saying and am I giving you any kind of confusing signal that, hey, markets on the one hand, I'm saying it will correct by 10%. And on the flip side, I'm saying that 2023 is going to be a good year. So what logic can I give you? Okay, so I will show you this piece of data. So what you will see is that this is the US Fed interest rate, whatever US Fed does, it also impacts the Indian Central Bank and Indian Central Banks also work in conjunction with whatever the US Central Banks are doing. I'm not saying that Indian Central Bank is not independent. It is 100% independent, but the macroeconomic policy of the world is somewhat decided by the US and India tends to follow that. So with that logic, what you will see here is that the interest rates in the US economy right now are around 5%. Now this is very, very high. There has been a sudden spike in this interest rate and this started happening from October of 2020. And therefore, we saw that the stock market fell quite aggressively in the US. Now, in 2023, two central things are going to happen when it comes to interest rate. Point number one is that the interest rate rise is going to slow down. So it is being forecasted that the interest rate in the US will rise to 5.5%. Then the interest rates will start to get cut down. Now, this is a major point because whenever the interest rates are cut down, the stock market rallies quite aggressively. For example, 2008 was a prime example. 2020 COVID was a prime example. Now I will give you a quick homework that go and test out what the interest rate was back in 2007 and then how it changed post 2008 and what the interest rate were back in 2019 and how the interest rates were brought down after 2020. So going by that logic, I feel that the first half of 2023 is going to be slightly bearish, but the second half of 2023 is going to be extremely bullish. This also ties into the fact that a lot of economies, be it Indian economy, US economies are going to have elections or certain major important elections and the governments would want to pump in optimism. So from that perspective, I'm quite confident that 2023 is going to be a good year for stock market investment. On a side note, if you want to use this information to make a lot of money, then you could consider building some positions in the US stock if your risk appetite matches. So from that perspective, I would say that there is a good opportunity in NASDAQ and S&P 500 right now. This is not a buying or selling recommendation. I'm just simply telling 
telling you whatever I am doing in the market. If it makes sense, then you could consider building some positions, especially given the fact that these entire broad market index, which are relatively less risky, they are trading at a massive discount right now in the US. Now my third key prediction is that debt heavy company that have given a lot of run up in the last two years are going to get corrected quite aggressively. Now which stocks am I talking about? I had already made a video on Adani stocks. I will link it in the description box. You can go and check it out. So I will just use Adani G's business as a case study. I am not trying to put any luncheon on Adani business. They have done wonderful things for the Indian economy. I am not questioning them. I am an investor so I have every right to analyze the stocks that are there in the stock market and give my commentary on it. So I am simply doing that. So we all know that in the last couple of years, Adani stocks have gone up like anything. So definitely these are not undervalued. This is point one or fact number one that you should be aware of. Second fact that you should be aware of, and this is not my opinion, these are facts, that almost every single Adani business is highly leveraged. Highly leveraged means that they have taken a lot of debt and it can easily be checked by analyzing this ratio. So for every one rupee of equity, Adani Green has a debt of 7 rupees. Now this is very very high levels of debt. Go and type of names of companies that are equally leveraged as Adani. So I will end the discussion there and I will quickly explain as to why having this high debt sitting in the year 2022-2023, it is going to be problematic for a company like Adani. So point number one is that Adani's cost of capital, cost of capital means that at what rate they are borrowing, that rate is very high. It is like saying that the EMI that you pay on your home is 1 lakh rupee. So your cost of capital is what? 1 lakh rupee. But your salary is what? Maybe 50,000. Now do you see this as a problematic scenario? The answer is yes. So same problem is happening with Adani stocks that their cost of capital is much higher than their return of capital. This is a point that I have discussed on the Adani stock analysis that I've done. You can go and watch that comprehensive video. Problem number two is that right now the interest rates in the economy are fairly high. I showed you the data also that the interest rates in the US are five, five and a half percent. Even in India, the FD rates right now are what? Seven, seven and a half percent at good banks. So what is happening here? Well, in simple economic terms, it means that the money has gotten very valuable. Bank wants your deposit, therefore they are paying you 7.5%. Banks are not loaning insane amount of money right now. What simply is happening right now is that credit has become expensive. And Adani, as we already know, they have already raised a lot of money and they will have to repay that debt in 2023 and there on. So 2023 is going to be a slow growth year for a company like Adani that has given massive run up. Now you will say that, okay, you only speak about Adani ji. Okay, so let me speak again. Airtel also, you can check the chart here. Airtel also exhibits exactly the same problem. So I'm not singling out Adani Ji's business. This is a general problem with debt heavy business that whenever the cost of capital becomes extremely heavy, it becomes a problem for these type of companies. So point number four is that I feel that edtech companies are going to exhibit profitability this year. And this is going to be a very important year for the future of edtech in India. I believe that companies like Unacademy, companies like Baiju's, they are going to exhibit and display profit numbers. I don't know how they will do it, but their focus has been profitability, not massive growth. They've already grown too big. Now they want to exhibit that profitability why? Simply because of the fact that now they will be launching their IPOs. Maybe not in 2023, maybe in 2024. And you will see a lot of YouTubers making a video that, you know what, these companies have just turned around their business. 2023 was such a great year, this, that, what not. Okay, all awesome things. But the key takeaway that you need to remember before this commentary starts flooding in, point number one, this is a run up to an IPO. So please be a little bit careful. That's point one. Point number two, the fundamental business model has not changed. Just because you're seeing better numbers in 2023 from a tech company does not fundamentally alter their business model. It might very well become Paytm 2.0, Zomato 2.0. I will just leave the conversation there because I don't want to get into legal quagmires with these companies. But but I hope that you got the message that as a smart investor, you need to keep this viewpoint in mind. You should not just buy a story, but yes, credit needs to be given that in 2023, these companies, at least from a profitability point of view, are going to do exceptionally well. Now comes prediction five that in the year 2023, the gaming industry in India will boom. It will become one of the most profitable business out there. Can I show you some data? Can I talk about some psychology? Can I give you some business thinking oriented points? Yes. 
Now consider the case of Dream 11 that from 2020 it has become one of the most profitable companies in India. Now why is it the case that gambling which has been wrapped up as gaming is becoming extremely popular in India. Okay so up until now the story was that gambling in India was considered to be a taboo. There used to be a lot of negativity associated with gambling per se. You could consider that as a cultural reason. If you go and study other cultures for example US culture you will see that entire Las Vegas has been built on gambling. Macau attracts a lot of wealthy Chinese people who want to gamble. So American culture, Chinese culture, they are already big on gambling. This scenario was not there in India. So the first leg here was that you portray gambling as gaming, which has already happened and has found a fit in India, make people addicted to it, rub hands with politician and then entirely start a gambling syndicate because there is a massive cultural revolution that can come around it. Am I approving of this gambling culture in India, not approving it? My opinion hardly matters. But is there a money making opportunity? Yes, there is a massive money making opportunity here. I will not reveal the name of the company in which I am investing because it involves a lot of risk. But tomorrow on the member community section of YouTube, I will write a detailed post on the pros and cons of investing in this company and the future of this company the way I see it. Prediction number six that in 2023 mid cap and small cap stocks are going to outperform large cap stocks by a mile. Why am I saying it? So let me quickly take you to the small cap and mid cap index do some index analysis and then I will help you understand some context. So you can see that this is the mid cap index in India and from its top it is trading at roughly 11% discount as of now. Now let's do the same exercise for small cap index and here you will see that it is trading at roughly 14.5% discount from the top. What about large cap? So how far below is it trading from its top? So you have large cap trading at 5% from its top, mid cap 10-12%, small cap 14-15%. So there is a huge variation here. Now here is the important point that whenever a sustained bull run happens, the word to focus is sustained, that whenever a sustained bull run happens in the market, the small cap, mid cap automatically grows many fold. This can again be back tested. Point number two is that right now the small caps and mid caps are way undervalued compared to large caps. So therefore their chances of recovery is much higher. And third and finally that right from the year 2016 small caps have not performed. So it has been a significant amount of time that small cap mid caps have underperformed the market. Now many of you have been asking me questions that hey I am holding like this small cap company that small cap company I am sitting at a 50% loss on this company will my losses ever recover? Yes. If you have purchased a good company, it is completely fine to continue to hold it. Small cap and mid caps are going to recover like anything. Now to help you build a little bit of confidence, let me tell you the story of Ujjeevan Small Finance. And if you take a look at its last six months performance, what you will see is that it was trading at 13 rupees. It went all the way to 32 rupees. So there was almost a 150% growth in this stock in the last six months itself. Now before that, and please go and check some of my videos, how much hate I got on this stock because on some video I said that hey, I'm investing in Ujjeevan Small Finance and unfortunately after that it corrected quite a lot it corrected by almost 40 50 percent but that is the very nature of small cap and mid cap investing and therefore i have stopped disclosing my public positions you can consider joining the member community i talk about all these stocks but to cut the long story short and give you a very honest message this is the very nature of small cap and mid cap investing and if you can't handle the volatility associated with small cap and mid caps don't invest in it and if you are investing be okay with a 40 50 percent fall in that stock that is how it operates now comes the next prediction that okay I don't want to invest in small cap mid cap too risky is there some safe investing that I can do yes so there are two sets where you can invest safely one is that buy nifty at falls this is strategy number one I still feel that banks are going to give very good returns in the year 2023. Why am I saying it? Let me quickly explain that by using the example of Nifty Bank. Now the first key thing that you need to notice about banking stocks is that whenever there is a bull run in the economy, banking stocks outperform other sectors generally speaking. Why? Because banking is slightly more volatile. So in India, if you are looking to generate that alpha or excess return in the market, then investing in banking stocks is a great strategy. So I can backtest this and show it to you. So for example, after 2008 crisis the banking stocks grew quite aggressively so almost by 300%. This entire bull run was supported by banks despite 2008 being a banking crisis. Okay something similar happened later yes so there is another bull run that happened from here 2016 all the way till 2020 that banks gave almost 150% gain. 
Now, if you zoom out and see how banks have performed over the last three years, you will find very interesting data. So you can see that this was the peak before COVID. So this was almost January of 2020. So this was approximately three years back. And where was bank Nifty trading? So it was trading at 32,585. Now we are at 43,627. So how much has the gain been in three years? 34%. Three years, 34% for a volatile sector is really bad. These are bad returns. These are not good returns. Yes, many of you are saying that, you know what, Bank Nifty is trading at its all-time high, this, that. But look at the fact that in the last three years, Bank Nifty hasn't given some kind of a massive run-up. There is a lot of ground to be made. So therefore, I feel that 2023 might be a year where Bank Nifty outperforms the market. Now comes prediction number eight, and this comes from the crypto world, that one of the major crypto exchanges is going to go under again. Now, why is that the case? Now, to explain this, I would easily need 30-40 minutes, but I will just list it out in bullet point. Point number one is that centralized exchanges are taking the crypto world down with it. Does it mean that the crypto market is evaporating? It will never come back again. I personally do not believe that. I feel that good blockchain projects are going to survive and make all-time high. How to buy it? That's a separate conversation altogether. Now, many of you have said that, you know what, RBI governor has said that, you know, crypto is going to do this crash, that crash. I am not here to comment on that. If you don't like crypto, just skip this point and move on to the next one. But I will quickly explain why am I saying what am I saying. So what is happening right now is that a lot of centralized exchanges are going under. For example, FTX went under due to a bunch of malpractices. Now, as a result, what is happening is, and it has been uncovered, that Sam Bankman freed, duped customers, and he's posted a bail of $250 million. And now he's flying in business class. So this does not set a good precedence. And there has been a very clear political nexus between Sam Bankman freed and US politics. Politicians. So Sam Bankman Freed and his organization has donated a lot of money to US politicians. Now, the issue is that this issue is going to blow up next year. And as a result, the Democrats who are sitting in power right now, they are going to bring in harsh regulation. And their primary target would be centralized exchanges. And therefore, it is very likely that a lot of centralized exchanges in India will also go under and a lot of centralized exchanges across the world will also go under. Now, does this mean that it is the end of crypto? No, absolutely not. Good blockchain projects will survive and will thrive after that. That is a separate conversation. So probably I'll make a separate video on that in case there is enough interest. Now comes my last prediction that the US market is going to become a strong winner in 2023. Why am I saying it? Because the last one and a half years has been really, really bad for one industry, which is tech industry. Therefore, we saw that Meta got crushed, Netflix got crushed, Tesla got crushed, Apple, Amazon type of companies also got crushed quite aggressively. These type of corrections have not happened in these type of stocks for a substantial period of time. Time. Now, these tech companies hold a very strong weight in US indices. For example, NASDAQ is made up of 25 to 30% of tech companies. Now, that is a very high weight for technology companies. Now, as a result, because tech stocks corrected, NASDAQ corrected with it. Similarly, S&P 500 corrected with it. So there has been a lot of panic selling that has happened in the US market. I don't think that that is going to continue. In fact, some stocks, for example, Adobe, and you can check the data from here, it has already started to recover from its lows. So it is quite given that the US market will recover quite aggressively this year simply because of the fact that a lot of negative sentiments associated with tech has already been factored into the market and from here on there is a rebuilding phase and a growth phase for tech stocks and resultantly the US market. So now let me wrap up the video by talking about the nifty levels that I had promised. We are already touching this support line. I do feel that at some stage we are going to hit this support line. This is again a very strong support. So we are looking at that roughly 10, 10 and a half percent correction. Now, the magical part is that this correction might not happen at this line. It might very well happen that the markets go up, then they come down, then they go up, then they come down. They might even aggressively fall about 20%. But there are two points that are very likely to happen. Point number one is that we are going to hit the levels of 19,500. And point number two, we are going to witness a 10% correction in the market in the year 2023. Now, this might immediately happen in January, February, and then we are looking at these levels. This is a bad case scenario that I'm seeing. Of course, if the COVID situation goes out of hand and there is some new variant of virus that comes in and it causes like a havoc, then of course, then these levels will fall further. But in case such a situation arises, my best bet is that the governments are going to start cutting the interest rate. They will then deal with the inflation problem later. So these were my nine predictions. Let me know what did you think about it. If there are predictions of your own, do let me know in the comment box and, and I will make an updated video on that, analyzing your predictions and what are my thoughts around it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you soon.